Well, she's got a lot of things on her mind to talk about talk now. About now to talk about. She's taking care of her boys, so you know that she's not going to shout now. Shout now, she's not going to shout. So get your headphones ready to hear what it's all about. No Fun, the Jen Kirkman Podcast, Season 10, Episode 1. Doing things a little differently around here, that's right. I'm calling out the seasons. 10 years of this podcast, sort of, whatever. It's Season 10, just don't do the math, it'll make you crazy. Welcome to the new season. Welcome to the new year. As you know, this podcast will be 26 episodes a year rather than 52. I was having a mild nervous breakdown working 70 hours a week, so many jobs. And this is Patreon only. You can get my free podcast, Anxiety Bites, every Wednesday, wherever you listen to podcasts. But no fun is Patreon only. Of course, you will get the first 20 minutes of every episode here for free if that satiates you, well, then there you go. And if it doesn't, head on over to Patreon for only three bucks a month to start. I'm just going to get right into it. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I think. I don't have to do any warm up or, you know, I, I always talk about, oh, I'm Jen and this is my podcast. And, you know, this is a podcast where I comment on cultural things going on, sociopolitical things. And sometimes what's going on in my head, it's not just going to be about my life anymore because honestly, I don't have a life and who cares? If some story in the news triggers uh, an old tale that I want to tell, great. But I'm taking a slightly new direction with this podcast where I will just, again, I will totally tell stories from my life, but it's not like, oh, maybe I'll read an article. There will always be something I'm referencing that's going on. Don't worry, there will be stories of my life in this episode. I'm going to talk about how my uh, back went out at Christmas and I have a new chiropractor in Brooklyn and then I had to see the other chiropractor in the Brooklyn office. And this woman was a, a lot, a lot. Super arrogant, reminded me of the empath who does eyebrows. I will be talking about my thoughts on the passing of Bob Saget. I will be talking about my thoughts on Clay Aiken running for Congress. (laughs) But, and so many other things that may pop into my head. But let's, let's talk about Omicron. And I know, I know you're thinking, Jen, I got to get away from this thing. I can't talk about it anymore. But I need to. I can't get away from it either. And I, but there's certain types of people right now that I can't get away from. And I need to talk about it. I need to talk about it into a microphone, hoping that anybody freaking understands. I am so exhausted by this new attitude that we suddenly have about Omicron that, oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to, I, I mean, I'm not going to try to get it, but if I get it, it's fine. It's mild. Everyone's going to get it anyway. Oh, well, let's just all get it over with. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. And then I'm here. And this is all from, you know, this isn't uh, conspiracy theorists or anti-vaxxers. This is people who think they're pretty politically astute. These are people who think they do and have done the right thing throughout the pandemic with their vaccines and boosters and masking and social distancing and and then they have and they should and that's it that's what we're supposed to do but but now it's just they've got their own they've got their own facts and they they're starting to say things like the scientists don't know anything no that is an attitude trickled down from some very dangerous people and you don't think you've been subtly brainwashed by it but you have you may think that you 
are bigger and better. Well, maybe not bigger, but you may think you're better than Joe Rogan, but you're not acting like it when you talk that way because that's where it trickled down from. Remember trickle down economics? That was uh, what Reagan promised in the 1980s that if you actually, if you make the wealthy wealthier, it will trickle down to everybody, even you gross poor people. That's he didn't say that, but you know, and uh, it doesn't work. It didn't work. But I got trickle down factonomics and that, or anti-facts. I couldn't think of a rhyme. I'm sorry. God. Couldn't think of a rhyme for economics that had like fat, like anti-facts. Oh, you know, season 10 of stuff, something can be tough. Usually in a sitcom, that's when they introduce like someone has a baby, you know. But we can't have a baby on the podcast. That's not going to make things better. That's not going to make me be able to think of a rhyme. In fact, it'll take my attention away because I'll I'll be very focused on the baby thinking, first of all, how did it get here? Is it really my responsibility even after I shut off the podcast? Like I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, it's it's hard to rock a baby while talking into a microphone. And I I talk with my hands a lot. And so I don't want to drop the baby. You're just going to have to bear with me that I couldn't think of a rhyme. And I'm sure you all can, and you'll all email me. You could have said this. I don't need to hear that Thursday night quarterbacking, (laughs) Monday morning quarterbacking. Oh, I couldn't. And then you could, you could, you could Monday morning quarterback, you could Thursday night quarterback your Monday morning quarterbacking. You know what? On Monday, I said they should have done this, but I actually think they should have done this. Anyway, my my uh, whole frustration is that when people talk like this, they're not thinking of a few things. They're not thinking about long COVID, which we don't know if Omicron has devastating long COVID effects because it hasn't been the long enough. Yes, Omicron, if you've been vaccinated and boosted can just be mild. Can. Sometimes it's not. But it still affects the economy. It affects workers, healthcare workers, people on the front lines, gig economy workers. There, oh, I'll, oh, gah, rah. <laughs> there was a great article in The Atlantic. Don't take it from me. This is from The Atlantic. Omicron is forcing us to rethink mild COVID. The staggering number of infections among the vaccinated is changing Americans' pandemic mindset. Now, Finland is handling long COVID really well. It, uh, the, the, the prime minister of Finland says that long COVID could become the nation's biggest chronic disease. The Minister of Family Affairs and Social Services, Krista Kru, said on Friday could be emerging as a chronic disease in Finland. So anyway, before I get into all this, my point is, God, do you guys remember two years ago now, it was two years ago, it was just about two years ago, maybe about, I don't know, 22 months. God, I am, I'm starting to talk like someone who has a baby. She's 22 months. That's, but that, that's when, that's when we went into the lockdown, COVID. I was March 13th for me. And I remember saying, do we want to talk about it on the podcast? I remember asking people, should we talk about it? Are you sick of it already? <laughs> After a week, were you sick of it already? We are entering into year three of this global pandemic. And did you ever think? I guess, I mean, I didn't not think. I, Yeah, sure. Of course, it could still be around. But, uh, oh, I just the fact that it's the cases or the amount they are. Whew. Because I thought, I, the other day I thought, oh yeah, two years of this. And then somebody made me realize, no, no, we've lived through two years of it. 2020 and 2021, we are entering year three. Holy shit, what is this doing to us? Ugh. I admit, I do feel a little depressed. Once Omicron hit, I went, oh God, here we go. It was. It's very interesting because I am... Uh, I'm on antidepressants. I'm on some ADHD medication and... You know, I meet with my psychiatrist over Zoom once every 
six weeks and we talk about how the medication's working. And when I moved to New York in October, I said to him, I don't think we need to make any changes. I'm not like we're on the lowest doses of everything. We, me. And I'm, you know what? I, I needed to get out of Los Angeles. Now, I, uh, moving is not a cure for what ails us. It doesn't cure depression. But I knew that for me, this is just for me, that part of my depression was I really hate extreme sunlight. The weather's too warm in, in LA. There had been so many fires. It's a very isolating city. So you have to make an effort to see people um, or you have to live with people. And I live alone and I, I do make a huge effort to see people. And I was seeing people, but then I had to contend with this weather and all of this stuff. And, and I just said, I just want to be back in a city that never sleeps. No, but that's very vibrant. And, you know, even though I live in Brooklyn in a semi-quiet neighborhood, it's still more vibrant than LA. And I don't feel uh, like I'm by myself here, even though I live by myself. And I, I just knew that it would do me good. And so when I got to New York and the cases, I mean, it was like 400 new COVID cases a day in New York. And they were really basically all people that weren't vaccinated. It was feeling real safe. I mean, it was really safe. And they checked your vaccine card before you went into restaurants and I was boosted. It was just, I mean, I had no worries. And I was so happy and content and fulfilled. And the only thing bothering me were the things that are real that I needed to take care of, like uh, having too many jobs and you know, needing to work, uh, work about my, um, stresses about money and things like that. But in general, my stabilized mood level, I wasn't craving to eat a lot of sugar. I wasn't craving to eat a lot or, or anything like that, which is usually what I do when I'm feeling just kind of low grade depressed when there's really just no hope of <sighs> like doing much, you know, getting out there, that was gone because that had been the sort of weighted jacket I'd been wearing throughout the pandemic, that feeling of I'm just not fully myself. I'm not living my life. I'm not, you know, it's not even about, oh my God, you're single. It's like, there's not even that hope of, oh, well, I don't know, kiss someone in a bar. Not that I'm ever doing that, but just that that kind of anything can happen, you know, Uh in the positive way, it just, there wasn't hope for that. I mean, and, and I mean, actually a lot of great things happened to me that didn't involve leaving the home. I, there's a lot of job opportunities that came up. So, but I just mean that, that like actually being a person in the world and living life, as we all know, those of us who took it seriously and didn't go anywhere before the vaccine, you know what I'm talking about. And so it's not that I'm disappointed because I actually thought this is over forever. I just was in the moment enjoying the respite from, I guess, the different variants. You know, Delta was, you were pretty protected against Delta with a booster. I was living in a community where most people were vaccinated. It was very low risk. And I got to do things, got to spend Thanksgiving with my family. I'd seen my family earlier in the spring. I was going out to restaurants. I was seeing friends. I was seeing Broadway shows. I was living, going to work. And then when Omicron came, I just started to get that feeling again, that feeling I had about two years ago when I asked you guys, should we talk about COVID? <laughs> of just, uh, it's just a, it's just a give up feeling, not, not give up hope, or give up trying, but just, I give up putting all of this extra effort into doing all the things that you're supposed to do when you're in a pandemic. I, I give up being inspired to, I mean, I'll walk on the treadmill. Maybe I'll cook. You know, there's no more making sourdough bread, you know, unless that's something that you are already doing. But I just feel exhausted by being walloped again. Now, again, I've been so lucky I didn't get sick and I still have my job. I have tons of friends. I do work in person, but it's all like testing and it's all, you know, everyone's vaccinated, COVID safe and all, all these rules and regulations. So 
there's human interaction, but I don't do anything besides that just because there's 74,000 cases of COVID a day right now in New York. And uh, I'm not, you know, I don't need to go sit inside a restaurant. But it's just, you know, last night it's like, okay, I'll play, I'll place a uh, grocery store o- order and, oh yeah, throw in a couple pints of ice cream. I'll, I'll just have them in the refrigerator. No, I won't because I ate them. <laughs> it's like just... Who fucking cares? But I think what's depressing me is two things. One is the literal, what is that, a crow gen? No, it's a record scratch, you jerk. Everything came to a halt. No more once a week Broadway show. No more, you know, oh, I'm just going to walk by this wine bar and have a glass and warm up and read my book. Nope. It's back to only doing the necessary things, phone dates with friends who live in my neighborhood, but it's cold out. You don't want to sit outside right now. And, and it's, that, it's that feeling. You know, I could go sit outside at a restaurant. There's outdoor seating, and it's really cute here in Brooklyn and in Manhattan, but I don't want to. I don't, people are sitting outside with giant, almost like the x-ray blanket you would wear at a dentist blankets around them and heat lamps, not in the cute, cozy way. Oh, I feel like I'm in a Christmas movie about Alaska. No, in that we're trying to have normalcy, so we can't sit inside because it's high risk. So we're going to put on all these leaded blankets and uh, heat lamps and eat with mittens on. I can't do it. Now, some people go, I can't sit at home alone. I can't, but I can't do the new normal. I can't do sitting outside under a weighted blanket with a heat lamp burning on just the top of my head, shivering so I can enjoy a night out at a restaurant. I can't do it. That's just me. That's how I respond to the crushing disappointment of this virus still raging. Now, other people can't. So that's one aspect of it to me is I'm just physically feeling the effect of, I'm not doing all the fun things I was doing, but The other part is, and I'm trying to do my meditating and breathing through the soul anger that honestly I'm afraid will poison my blood if I really lean into it too much, that I have at the people who would not get vaccinated and at the people who convinced these people, otherwise smart people, to not get vaccinated. That is why all these variants have been going crazy. I know there are a million reasons and it's all a perfect storm, but that is a huge one. I am angry at everything, (laughs) but I'm mostly angry at the new attitude that people have, which is, oh, we're all going to get it. Let's just get it. I'm actively angry about that. It makes me, I'm not going to say anxious because I don't feel anxiety in the classic sense of I'm nervous, but I'm I'm just side-eyeing people going, I thought I knew you. I thought I trusted you. I just don't feel good about people. And this, this includes people I know. And, uh, you know, it's not an othering thing. It's not, there's a type of person that says this stuff. It's been every kind of person that I see walking around. I I don't like this attitude. And and oh, it just exhausts me because I'm afraid when people get exhausted like that and they start checking out. That's the one thing I haven't done. I haven't checked out of learning about this stuff. Every time I say that, I think of Devil Wars part of this stuff. Hmm. Well, this stuff was made by designers. Wait, hang on. (laughs) I have to do this. I could, I should rewrite it. This stuff? Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. Okay. Let me start. This stuff? Oh, okay. I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. 
You go to your closet and you select out a, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that sweater is not just blue. It's not turquoise. It's not lapis. It's actually cerulean. You're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns. And then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean military jackets? And then Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. Then it filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And so it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact you're wearing the sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. That's what I want to say to people. You think you're opting out of this COVID thing, but in fact, you're adopting the attitudes that was selected for you by the people of Spotify who gave Joe Rogan a $30 million contract. All right, we'll see you, everybody else, over on Patreon as I continue this COVID rant and everything else we're going to talk about today on No Fun, the Jen Kirkman 